Well, hello and welcome to the Accor Hotels Arena in Paris and the final of the 2018 Women's European Handball Championships as Russia play France. The team's arriving here, France, the first to step in. Alison Pino, veteran of so many finals for them. While the Russians arriving there, Sen first off the bus. This should be an intriguing one. We started with France, Russia, and we will finish with the same match. Russia, of course, who opened up with that 26-23 win against France on day one in the uh, same group they were in Group B in Nancy. And so here come the teams. Russia, who after that beat Montenegro, they took out the uh, B team for the uh, Slovenia match. It was without relevance to them. And then in the next round beat Serbia and Denmark. And again, when they were guaranteed top spot, put the uh, second string out and lost to Sweden before going through to the semi-final as winners of this group ahead of France and beat Romania 28-22. Dimitrieva, the captain, one of the 13 Olympic gold medalists here from Rio, where, of course, they beat France in the final. She will be key. Half of the team are drawn from the Champions Club, Rostov Don, including Sen, who we saw leading the team off the bus. She'll be key in defence. But right back, Yakireva is the one that all eyes will be on. The fourth top scorer in the competition, the second with assists. And if France can manage her, they have a chance. Otherwise, they will be in trouble. The wingers Kuznetsova, Managarova and Sudakova have all been uh, very economical with their shooting. Managarova scoring a phenomenal 24 from 25, while Samokina, player of the match versus France two weeks ago, has been rather blowing hot and cold. But in goal, Sidoikina. Well, she's done the heavy lifting between her and Trusova. 32% save rate. Expect a huge cheer now for France, who after that defeat against uh, Russia on the uh, opening day, were really in formidable form and were only really troubled once more against Sweden in the main round when they uh, struggled to get a draw out of that match. But a 10-goal win against the uh, Serbia on the final day in the main round made sure that they would go through in second place behind Russia. Well, they were led out by Dembele, Dembele Pavlovic, their captain and left winger, who uh, until last year played in Russia for their champions, Rostov Don. She's up against eight of her former teammates today. Thirteen of the players remain from the uh, world championship winning team last year. Two made their debut for France here, including the impressive right winger Koatania. In the centre, Zadi has been impressive in attack and defence and plays. 100th international for France here today. But it's left back in Zeminko that all eyes will be on for France. She has been absolutely astounding. Glosser there, the goalkeeper. They are so lucky. She and Lino have been on great form. In fact, they are the number two ranked goalkeepers in the competition behind Norway Solberg with a 36% save rate. And that is what they are all after. Lino, the goalkeeper in the picture there, he has been first choice usually. Well, there's cover on the left back from Ziminko. They do have the 21-year-old Kano who jumps like she's got springs on her feet and shoots like a bullet. What an amazing experience, though, for the newcomers, and especially for that one there. 17-year-old Fopa making her debut for France here at the Major Championship a week before the competition. Didn't even know she was going to be picked for France. Only just played her first international in the uh, friendlies there. Something to write home about. And a massive cheer for the final player on the lineup for France. Right back, Lakhaber comes out. Played for a while uh, in Russia a few years uh, ago. Zvezda Zvenigorod. She is definitely one to watch for the French team. If she's on song today, brand new dimension with her on one side and uh, Nziminko on the other. So the uh, referees for the match will be introduced. They are from Denmark, Karina Christiansen and Lena Hansen, who actually refereed the final of the Women's World Championships last year in Germany when France beat Norway. Maybe they are the host's lucky charm. So the rest of the uh, table officials being introduced now. 
So now it is time for the national anthems. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem of Russia. It's Russia first. Here in the arena, and now the anthem of France. Huge cheer and an a cappella finale to the Marseillaise here in the Accor Hotels Arena in Paris. Packed to the rafters, over 15,000 spectators. It's a record for the women's uh, European Championship final. The teams have met 13 times. Russia have won nine, France four. And in fact, of course, the Russians beat France in the uh, Olympic final in Rio. 20. Uh, 2-19 on that occasion, they have beaten them at the opening match of this European Championship. And in fact, in official competition, you have to go all the way back to the quarter-final of the World Championships in 2011 for France's last victory over Russia. This is the lineup for Russia. Should start with Sen, Dmitrieva and Vyakireva at the back. Kuznetsova and Managorova on the wings and Makieva on the line. Vyakireva there, 36 goals so far in the competition. Absolutely key to Russia the MVP of the competition with 38 assists to boot. For France, they tend to start with Lino in goal, Dembele and Flip on the wings, and then Ziminko, Zadi and Inglo at the back with Lacabert on standby and Edwige on the line. And Ziminko is France's own weapon here with 34 goals, a staggering 85% success rate, which for a back player is phenomenal, and 16 assists. If she's on song, they have a chance. But Trefilov, the old fox, well, he may have a few tricks up his bag. But we are seeing here today two of the best coaches in the business. Olivier Krumholtz in charge of France since 20 years ago. Brief spell away, and then he was back because, frankly, they needed him. France have beaten uh, the Russians since 2011. That was only in a friendly, though, back in 2016. But uh, they have to go back seven years for their last official win. Can they break that run here today? Russia, if they've got Vyakirev on song, will be in trouble. So uh, Joël Delplanc in the centre, president of the French Handball Federation on the right, the president of the International Handball Federation, Hassan Mustafa, and also uh, Roxana Maracinea Neunu of uh, Sports Minister France is here today as well.
Just about ready. Hang on to your hats. So here we go then, Russia in the white shirts and blue shorts throw off the final of the 2018 Women's European Handball Championship final here at the Accor Hotels Arena in Paris against the host France in the all-blue strip. Russia, the Olympic champions against France, the world champions. One of them will finish today as a double champion. Paul Bray here with you for this match. Incredible atmosphere, 15,000 spectators in the arena. Send straight through. Opening goal. Russia off the mark. Be a free throw. If France can keep the scoring down, they have a chance here, ultimately. Two big defences. They let the uh, score run a bit there. The Russians could well have the advantage. So they've got, uh, as expected, Iglon at right back. Zadi in the centre. And Zeminko, who's been terrific, is at left back. Iglon and Zeminko. Through the keeper, and France get the first goal to a huge cheer in the arena. It's going to be a free throw. It's the incident, uh, the goal rather, again. One kilometers an hour. Two on the line. Wing has gone in as well. Sen straight through inside the area. She thought that should have been a penalty. Trefilov says just get back. Whistle's already gone. That won't count. France, who beat the uh, semi final curse to finally get to a European Championship final. They've never been in a Euro final. Three lost semi-finals. Three bronze medals today. They will go better, but they would rather have the gold. For the Russians, well, they made it through to the final. Back in 2006, when they lost 24-27 to Norway. Quick throw out, Dmitrieva, the captain. The ball is fumbled, France pick it up again. We've got a chance here before the Russian defence can get organised. Oh, straight through. And Iglo. Puts France in front, and Trefilov barking away from the side, as he always will do. Here it is again, and Sen just caught out of position. Kumholtz can celebrate. He has led France here today to their 10th medal under his charge. As I said, they would certainly hope to have a gold. And that pass to Vyakireva going a little bit astray. Uh, Nagarova as uh, Lino comes across. Zadi. Into the wing, there's no space there. French captain Dembele Pavlovic on the far side, number 17. Payon says the Danish referee. Dummies and goes back in again. Dembele saved and goes off to the side. Beaten by Sidoikina. She was uh, club teammates, of course, with her, and indeed seven of the other Russians at Rostov Don last year. Dembele. Zadi. Teasing away and Ziminko looking to pass to the line. Oh, that was unlucky. And that's a penalty interference from Vyakireva. The captain looks around, Dembele Pavlovic. Another one of uh, Dembele's former club teammates last year in Russia giving her a little punch. He was also standing inside the area. Dmitrieva gets an absolute earful for that as off the bench comes the legend that is Alison Pino, former World Player of the Year. Uh, 
and scores. And the best possible start for France. 3-1 with five minutes played. Cool, calm. Staring straight down the middle. No hint for Sidoikina. The Russia just need to settle into their game here. They've started, interestingly, on the left wing with Samokina instead of Kuznetsova. Did that in the semi-final, number 18. Goes in on the line. Vyakireva, well read by Lino. First save of the game for the goalkeeper who plays for Dürer in Hungary. Champions there. Move there from Valda. Oh, yes, now into the wing. Big angle through the legs of the keeper. They pulled another one back. Managarova, who's got an impressive record here at Euro 2018. Hasn't missed a single shot from the wing. In fact, only one in the whole competition. That was a fast break, and that's another penalty. Flip is fouled, and a two-minute suspension for Samokina. Her fifth of the competition. Let's see it again. She went into her, still moving. There was the uh, goal at the other end, though. Through the legs. So she is off. And on comes Pino again. Good save! And a change of tactic by Sido Aquino, who came a long way forward to cut down the angles. Meant she had to react faster. But she beats Pino off the thigh. But uh, Russia short-handed and don't tend to take out their goalkeeper in these situations. Happy to just play on. Tries to go through, nothing there. Yakireva so far can't find a way through. She's being watched like a hawk by Nziminko, who's pushing up. The two stars of the show for each team. And uh, Pino, who's staying on at the moment, picks up a yellow card. She was instrumental in the uh, defence when they beat uh, Serbia in the final main round match, a match they had to win. They were struggling in defence. She came in and in a matter of five minutes had settled the defence and France was scoring fast breaks and took control of the game, straight through. Oh, went to release the wing, did manage it in the end, and straight round the head of the keeper, and it's all square in Paris. Vyakireva. It was untidy, but in the end, Vyakireva, hiding in the wing, moved herself wide, straight past the goalkeeper's head. With the response from France, courtesy of Gras Zadi, one of six players who plays for Mets. Cheers rising again here in the arena. Trying to go through, solid defending, Iglon is just latching on every time. Yakireva comes anywhere near her. And on the line, they're trying to help Yakireva, the ball is loose, but that's a free throw. No argument from the French there as Dimitrieva is uh, pulled up by Edwige. Oh! Attempted backflip there by Sen, goes straight. France have possession back, nine minutes played, 4-3. And they're pushing up a long way, back at full strength as we see that uh, incident again. Look at the uh, defence, they'll have to drop back in though, when Edwige comes in. 
And if anyone's got the defence that could potentially uh, make it hard for the Russians here at this stage, it is probably France. And uh, when the players were interviewed at the end of their semi-final, they said, you know, we want revenge for that defeat at the Olympic Games and at the start of this European Championship, but that's a turnover. Russia on the break. Quick pass back to Vyakireva. Dmitrieva goes straight to the wing. Big angle now, an inside post. Kuznetsova scores. She's come back on for Samokina after that two-minute suspension. Lovely uh, cut through. Dmitrieva, the captain, just taking out everybody and going straight to the wing. Ten minutes played, 4-4. So Lacraber has come on into the attack at right back. Thing for France is they did look overawed in the uh, first match of the championship against the Russians in front of the home audience. They said they put that behind them now. And they've just got to take the positives from it as Zadi goes down. A little bit of slip on the floor. No harm done by Sen there. There are no claims from the French either. It was just one of those things. Go oh, well blocked. Zadi teases again, finds a way through. There's so little space. Well, the French sports minister's enjoying that. Roxana Marasinianu, former world championship swimmer. Ah, oh, two minute suspension for France. And Yakireva's wizardry as we see the goal again. Just smuggled through Edwige. For this, Pino has gone off. Well, I'd say that Vyakireva was looking for it. She went down to go into her arm. And that was clever play by uh, the Russian right back and the Danish referees. Send off the French legend into the wing. Ah, oh, tipped away. It's going to be a throw in from the corner. Russia keep possession. Sent. Again into the wing, this time there's no space. Dmitrieva, straight through. All square again. <laughs> Russian captain can celebrate. So Lacraber, can she inject a bit of pace? Number 64, who together with the uh, French goalkeeper were teammates with uh, Kuznetsova, the Russian left winger at Varda last season. Here she comes, Lacraber, Zadi. France is short-handed, looks for the line. Yes, it's a penalty. Edwige inside the area, they couldn't really give her that goal. It again, passed it in, and uh, Dmitrieva pulling her down, but she was well inside. So after the earlier miss by uh, Pino, Lacraber steps up. Oh, saved again! And France have missed two penalties now. Sidoikina brilliantly played. Tried to go through the legs, I think. Two goals they could come to regret later on. Goalkeeper is out for France. Only for another 15 or so seconds before they're back to full strength. France will uh, play it easy here. Accelerate only uh, when they're really short. Oh, empty goal. She can just lob it down. 6-5 and the lead now all of a sudden switches back to Russia. Those penalties will come back to haunt them, and Sen just helps herself. Reaction of the uh, French uh, reserve players says it all. They are back to full strength again now, though, France. Well, at stake today as well is a uh, place in the uh, Olympic uh, finals in uh, Tokyo. 
for the team that wins the championship. They will go through as European champions to the uh, Olympic Games. A little extra carrot there, if ever you needed one. Free throw for France. The other thing we also know here today is that we will have a new champion. Only four teams have ever won the European Championship. Norway seven times, Denmark three, Hungary and Montenegro one. Norway, the defending champions here, had to settle for fifth place after never being out of the final since 2000. But uh, they fluffed their lines in the preliminary stage, and although absolutely dominating after that, it was too late. Here, two of the teams that really have impressed all the way through. La Caber dummies and goes through over the keeper. First goal of the game for the 31 year old who now plays for Fleury Loiret. Dummies the first shot, and as uh, Petrova, the defense specialist, uh, jumps, she goes around. It's all square again. Into the line. Oh! Defence absolutely torn apart there as Petrova helps herself at the back. So midway through the uh, first half. Russia back in front, 7-6. Shot efficiency, France 67%, Russia 88%. Not been France's day, Lino making just one save from seven shots so far. And the French defence not quite holding water. And it's a two-minute suspension pushed in the air. And uh, Petrova... Oh, she may have had a tug on the sleeve, but uh, either way, she's off. So, a conversation with Trefilov, that's always one to look forward to. So France on the attack. France, who've uh, conceded the least goals of uh, any team here, 139. They are the stingiest uh, defence around, and amazingly, because that tends to be what they live off the defence, they do happen to be also the most successful uh, team with their shooting, most economical on 66%. Here today, though, they are being outplayed by the Russians as Zadi does a little one-two on the line and Hidwish levels it up again Samukina can't look so Sen she gets an earful on the way off being used in defense only at the moment with Makieva going through all and the misconnection, I think, as she tried to or expected to uh, be held up. Does the dummy, but in fact, Idwish stands aside but uh, catches her with a foot. <laughs> Trying to isolate the winger. Kuznetsova in on the wing, who's actually Vyakireva's sister. Vyakireva is being individually marked at the centre now of a 5 0 1 defence with a passive play called Vyakireva, that's inside the area. It won't count. Quick ball out by Lino. Zadi, oh, straight into the keeper, and France is shooting, letting them down here today. Two penalty misses, and now that fast break. It was a clean breakthrough. So France changed the wings. Kuatania came in first, and now Huet has come in. Real pattern to this, around the 20-minute mark. And Kuatanea gets straight on the score sheet, the 25-year-old who plays for Brest and who's playing in her first major championship for France. And she's had a terrific championship, lovely goal. Eight, seven, France edge back in front again with two quick goals. Very deep defence now pushing up. Going to be a free throw. Dmitrieva looks up to see if it's anything more, but it is just a nine meter. She quizzes the referee, Karina Christiansen, but that is all she gets. She's defending inside the area and a push as she shoots. Team timeout. 
Russia. Well, boost of a talk there by Krumholtz. Coaches are watching in Russia. So you've got a direct line to Trefilov. That should come helpful. So play resumes and again. Oh, good save, Lino. That'll boost her confidence. Second save of the game for the goalkeeper from Jure. Playing her 221st international for France today, Lino. Kuznetsova had a huge angle for the shot, tried to put it through the legs, but she brought her leg back down again. Read it well. Kuznetsova gets an earful on the way through from uh, Kromholt, uh, from uh, Trefilov. And Pino now staying in the attack. Second line, oh, through the keeper. Pino has an influence straight away. 29-year-old. She's played 227 internationals for her country. Plays for Brest now. Brought on in those tension situations when you need a cool head. Looks for the line, well covered. And again, Pino comes in quickly and blocks the gap. It's just a free throw. Years of experience honing that one. Got in there quick. A little bit of ushering with the hand, never helped. Or never hurt rather, and so Dmitrieva. And now in comes Malashenko for the attack, playing in at uh, left back. Looks for the line, yes! Lovely supply by Vyakireva. And scored by uh, Ksenia Makieva. The Rostov Don connection works well. So, uh, see this again, look at Yakireva, sucks out Edwige and uh, Nziminko, the wrong side of the line player. Pino goes in on the line, she's not a right back, so uh, it is really about trying to create space, looking for the line. Defenders uh, standing inside the area when they took the ball, Sen. Annoyed. She's been such an amazing defender, Sen, here at Euro 2018. Glosser looking on, still the other goalkeeper. No change there, even though Lino is below par at two from nine. Saves. <laughs> Team timeout, France. 20 minutes played, 9-8 to the hosts. On va changer de jeu, mais le 4, le problème, on va le refaire. Le problème, c'est qu'on perd l'écartement, là. Faut partir tranquille, jouer loin, mais en étant lancé. Et là, là, et là, avec le joueur qui est parti, accélération ici, ça va s'ouvrir. On remet Alex, on fait bloc sur le 2, rentré, OK Bloc sur le 2, rentré. N'hésite pas N'hésite pas à transformer la 06 en un 5 décalé. C'est elle qui nous emmerde. D'accord Incredible scenes here, over 15,000 spectators, this record audience. So play resumes, France leading by one, and Kromholz trying to change the game a little here. 
He certainly has changed at the back because Nyombla has gone into the centre. Lacrabert. Powerful shot, but it uh, goes way over the bar by Nyombla. She races off and makes way for Iglon to come on, as does Lacrabert. With Pino coming in. Big shot. Good cover on the line. The shot in uh, this final so far in the uh, tournament, the players in this final that should be is uh, Anna Sen, who's so well renowned for her defending, but uh, she's put uh, shot away at 106 kilometers an hour, second only to Abing. Across the board, a bit of a shakedown going on down there. Malashenko comes in, free throw. Vyakireva has been uh, coming under close scrutiny, but the good news is two are coming forward, straight down the middle, France have it. it. Wasn't a great shot, tried to flick a wrist around it, but couldn't quite get on top of that. The reaction there from Sidakova. Well, we knew this would be a tight encounter and we knew the defence would be utterly critical here, and it has been. Lacrabert, not as free shooting as she has been over the years. Quet, oh, what a shame, the whistle's already gone and uh, Sido Ikina would have stopped moving on that one. As uh, Fupa gets ready to come on, well, what a moment for her, Pauletta Fupa, 17-year-old. We made a debut here at the European Championships, didn't know she was going to be in the team a week before. The youngest player ever to put on a French shirt for the senior team. An honour she takes from Pino. Now the veteran number seven in the team, oh yes! Teased and then went through, and Zeminko. Third for her, 27-year-old, plays for Siofok in Hungary, 56 goals for them this season. Sandiakireva hasn't quite managed to exert the same control she's used to, but she knew that would come in tough. Stolen, but uh, unfairly uh, blocked off Dmitrieva. But that was nice and solid, as you would expect from Beatrice Edwige, one of the toughest defenders in the business. One of six players who come from Mets and uh, they hit back though, Vyakireva. Been made to work hard, but she's getting there, second goal for her. Have to switch back the other way, Nyombla. Zeminko on the other side, Huet. Huetane. And Fopa in on the line, just 17. Oh, wrong foot of the keeper. Nyumla, who looked like she'd lost a place in the team to Nyakate. But Nyakate had a slow start to the competition, and in the end, Kromholtz called her back. She's already repaid him with three goals as the crowd enjoy the tough defending from France. Holmholtz barking orders oh, over the head of the keeper. Beautifully done by Daria Dmitrieva, the captain. 23-year-old who plays for Lara Togliatti. Just over the shoulder. Second goal for Dmitrieva. There's nothing in it here in Paris. And Fopa comes off again. He's uh, put her on for very short bursts throughout this uh, competition. Fopa, but she's managed to score four goals. Just 22 minutes on court in total. La Crabère. If she wanted to, she has got a big shot still in play. We're past the 25-minute uh, mark now. Less than five remaining. Oh! Through Sido Ikina, she'll be annoyed with that. In Zeminko. 
tackle handoff as Lacabert blocks the defender. Vyakireva can't come across and cover. Big jump, but it went straight through the legs of the keeper. Dmitrieva, Vyakireva. France, who were so upset when they lost the Olympic final to the Russians in Rio. They've been uh, just about level until Lacabert picked up an injury, dismissively held that one. Ball quickly out, and Trefilov can't believe it. Eglon. Saved. And uh, France, wasteful with their shooting today. Picked up again, and now it's gone down again. Sedoikina cut the angle, came out quick. Certainly done her bit, Sedoikina, with five saves so far in the game. Good save. And a penalty won. The rebound snatched out of the air by Makieva superbly. And it's all for nothing for Lino. There was the initial save, but the defence reacted too slowly. Yakireva. Oh, beautifully done. Broken wrist shot. Brings her wrist back, runs it off the fingertips, just curves over the keeper. Less than three minutes to go, 12-11. Now Lily Bleu resonates around the arena, La Crabère. Lacrabert, space seemed to be there, but the line players down and they uh, get a free throw. Solid defending Mamma Kieva as ever. 28 year old. She scored over 250 goals for her country. Zviakireva looks on from the bench, not being used in defense. Having a chat there with Kusova, the other goalkeeper. Passive play being called against France as we go into the last two minutes of the first half. Into the wing, Dembele, side netting, and another save by Sedoikina. Got her hands on the ball, a sixth save. Russia stream forwards. Need to reorganize a bit. Dmitrieva is now going into the left back position. On comes Kochetova, number six. Place for Astra Kanochka. Dislocated the shoulder early in the competition at the end of the match. It was against Slovenia. Two days later, was back on court again. Made a stern stuff. That come to think of it, it might have been against Montenegro actually, and then she played in the Slovenia match two days later. So time ticks away here. Oh, nearly stolen in Ziminko. Teases Vyakireva, and she's been under such close scrutiny. Dimitrieva straight through, and they're level, going into the last minute before the half-time break. This is all we wanted it to be. Good close final, and as she comes down, she drops it over her, smartly done. Third goal for Dimitrieva. France then have a chance to uh, take a psychological lead into the break here. Just over 30 seconds remaining in the first half. No one's really been able to break the other. France have had most of the lead, but the Russians have had their moments too. La Crabère. Fertile territory for her. She loves to go right across the defence and find the gap on the far side. Ten seconds for Russia to level it here before the break. As again, Vyakireva is under very close scrutiny. Oh, off the post! And a push, and that's going to be given to the Russians. It's going to have to be a direct free throw. She thought it was hers, I think, uh, Idwiz, but they're going to have to take the throw. It's got to be a direct throw. 
And the French need to concentrate here and get the wall in. So up steps Dmitrieva, 1 meter 78, see if she can shoot over or through the wall. Tries to go for the lob, but uh, Lino takes the ball calmly and hands it back. And so at the break, France have managed to just about keep the initiative here, but the crowd have been treated to a fantastic first half in the final of Euro 2018. This, though, the goal by Lacrabert that gives them that one goal edge at the break. And so at half time here in Paris, it's France 13. Russia 12. Well, both teams have given 100% here. And Yakireva, though, not able to exert quite the control, but she's managed three goals and three assists so far as the French go off. Much to think about for them, and this is very finely balanced here. 65% of France's attacks and 71% of their shooting is going in. It's actually improving as the half goes on. 61% of the shooting for Russia, and we've had just the one fast break, but France may regret those two missed penalties so far, with just five turnovers, Russia, and three for France so far. Well, the uh, top scorers so far, Dmitrieva and Vyakireva, with three apiece for the Russians, but then Ziminko, top scoring in the final with uh, four. And the fastest shot, well, Ziminko, 97 kilometers an hour, with Yakireva, the best of the Russians, on 93 kilometers an hour. So a good start by France in the first half. They went into a 3-1 lead, but then the Russians woke up, stormed back, and in fact, briefly led by one before France pulled two in front again. But it's nip and tuck here, and it's all to play for in the second half. 13-12, the lead for France. We'll take a break as well. Join us again for the second half. We'll see you then. So welcome back to the Accor Hotels Arena in Paris and the final of the 2018 Women's European Handball Championships and at the half-time break, France, the hosts and world champions are leading Olympic champions Russia 13-12. There is nothing in it. I would say probably the scoring going slightly faster than France really want to uh, exercise any control over it. It's very much nip and tuck here between the two teams. They know each other well. In European Championship encounters, Russia lead France three to one. They've uh, won the last four meetings in official competitions. There have been an additional two friendlies in there where France has won one of them. France's last win over Russia in official competition at the World Championships in 2011, when uh, France beat uh, them 25-23 in the quarter-final. Glosser getting ready to replace Lino in goal. Glosser, who wasn't in the French team of the World Championships last year, is having a baby. It was Cleopat Darlou who went with Lino to Germany. And, uh, Glosser, very experienced. She's on exactly the same save rate coming into this uh, final, 36% as Lino has actually got stronger as the competition has gone on. France have uh, done reasonably well to stay on top of Yakireva. But uh, the problem is there's plenty of strength and depth on the uh, Russian bench. But uh, control her and you have a chance. If you can't, then I'm afraid you are really in trouble. So, seconds ticking away before the second half gets underway in front of 15,000 spectators here in Paris. So, France throw off the second half of the final of Euro 2008 here in the Accor Hotels Arena in Paris, leading 13-12 against Russia. France looking for revenge, not only for the defeat in the opening match of this championship when these two teams met, and Russia won 26-23 but also for that defeat at the Olympic finals in Rio. Lacrabert manages to uh, recover it without stepping on the ball. And, uh, she's gone down again, a bit of moisture on the ground maybe. Lacrabert in the centre at the moment. Iglon, they would normally be uh, 
good save again. Sedukin, a seventh save of the game. Quick ball out. Russia clearly want to move this a bit quicker, which is exactly what the French don't really want. Into the wing, not enough space. Lines waiting, but Yakireva can't get through, and they settle things down. Teams have enjoyed the fast breaks here. As we watch Sidokinas make seven saves. Linul made six in the first half. Actually, both the same. 32. Uh... Yakireva! Oh! Got a touch on it, Glosser on the way through, and Trefilov incandescent for some reason. And remonstrate with poor old Yakireva, she sits on the bench. Oh, that almost looked telegraphed by Camille Yeglon, but somehow it just cruised in. And the 33-year-old plays for Nantes, one of the venues where they played in the main round, tucks it away. Adds to her impressive tally of 536 goals for France, Iglon. Russia have scored 29 fast breaks from 40 in the competition so far, but France 41 from 52. Joined top with uh, Norway, which is quite some going for the French, that uh, they should be the ones forcing the break, but it's off the back of some good defending. And Glosser and Leroux pushing the ball out quick. Little free throw given here. You can't really argue with that one, frankly, is Makieva's shirt being pulled off her. Second line players going in. Managarova, who's had a terrific championship, that's inside the area. The call against Sen, a lucky break for France. Lacrabert up to Iglon. Oh, and again, a poor pass. And uh, she's spending a lot of time on the floor for all Lacrabert, trying to recover situations. And for France, Canor is on. She had a brief spell in the first half. Scored six against Russia in the opening match, the number 21. And she is just 21. Relative newcomer to the team. And she's got a huge jump on her and she can shoot like a bullet. The Russians know that, though. They'll be watching her. Here he comes. No shot this time into the wing. Flip. And again, a poor pass to Lacrabert. Eglon is now completely in the wrong place. Oh! Clips it off the post. Goes off the back, throw in for the Russians. Not been the best of days. And is uh, Mbappe enjoying a bit of handball for once. Gets a big roar from the crowd. <laughs> they like their football too. Managarova, penalty, defending inside the area. She says, I got the goal, but she was clearly inside when she shot. Uh, back foot was down inside. Yakireva against Glosser, who saved three penalties, the French keeper. Not that one, though. Yakireva puts it away. Showing the French how it's done. Over the shoulder, she drops her arm. Two penalties scored by Vyakireva. So far, the uh, favourite penalty shooter for Russia has been Samokina, the left winger. I've always been a bit surprised because she's actually got a fairly poor track record with 14 scored from 23. Oh! Did I mention she's got a bullet of a shot? Canor, let's rip. Smiles all round. What a find for France, the 21-year-old. Two-goal lead is restored. Yakireva looks for the line. And Glosser takes no chance and knocks it off behind to make sure it's a goalkeeper throw. So changes are going to take place again as they go. <laughs> 99 kilometers an hour. They still haven't quite broken the 100. If anyone can, she can, though. Oh, push in the air. And Snopova doesn't uh, get herself a great reception here in Paris with that one. Canor breaks through. Hefty shove. Well, they've still got to score the penalty, France, and that hurt.
They've got to score it, as I said. Pino, she's missed one. Oh! And she's caught the goalkeeper. And straight up, and there's a discussion here, because if that is uh, deemed to have been intentional, she tried to put a bit of spin on it, and instead she caught Sedoikina on the side. She could be in trouble. The referees have asked for a video replay. Pino. They're going to take a look. Immediate apology. Caught the side. Now, it's not straight into the face, and you might say, well, many shots go uh, straight past the ear, and Kumholtz saying there's nothing there. I mean, it's unfortunate. But uh, it's not going to be his decision. It's the Danish referees who are looking at the replay. Clips the side. I argue that she may well get the benefit of the doubt. Let's hope so for her sake. But uh, if they lose her, that's a lot of experience to step away from the court in the middle of the final. It would be a rather sad way for her to finish it. But let's uh, see what they say. They're having a very long look catches the side of the face, and there was only a minor deflection. They're all saying, yeah, brush the face, not into the face, but uh, they would say that. It's the French reserve players. Side of the face. It's going to stand, I think. Nothing given. A collective sigh of relief in the arena. Is it or? No? Oh, she is red-carded. Kormholtz and the crowd can't believe it, and Pino is in tears. She is absolutely in tears. And she's walking off, and she is inconsolable. The goal is disallowed, and it will be a turnover. And the crowd, I'm afraid, they're not going to forget this for a little while, the referees. Clips past the face, but it did catch the side of her face on the way. And Kumholtz simply can't believe it. And poor old Alison Pino, one of the nicest people in the sport, is absolutely beside herself. Well, they've uh, restored the goal. I thought they were going to remove it, which would have been interesting. And that is a huge, huge blow for France. Because she controls things nicely in defence, and she's a steady influence, and they're going to need that at the end of what is, I'm sure, going to be a tight game here. Kulm also has to forget it. It's done, she's gone, and we have to move on. France will be allowed, though, to replace her after two minutes, but the crowd are on their feet and booing the decision. Kulm is still remonstrating, and the assistant coach is trying to tell him, calm down, it's, it's gone. And they've had to stop the clock again. And back to the table comes uh, Lena Hansen. There's no point arguing. I don't think they're going to change their mind. I have so much sympathy for Alison Pino. But the referees, when it's near the face, it's always going to be a close call, and they've gone for the red card. Not been lucky over the years because, uh, in fact, Attacking foul. And look at the reaction from the French players. They are pumped up for this. Maybe this is just the trigger they needed to up a gear. Pino looks on. To them, they feel it's an injustice. The Russians will say it's absolutely the right decision. You shot much too close to the face of the keeper and you're endangering the player. Goalkeeper is out, France attacking at parity. Pinot, who ironically, when they reached the final of the World Championships in 2011, ruptured 
Therese Ciel in the semi-final against Denmark missed that. She was at least with them when they won the world title in 2017. The second time France had won the world championships, 14 years apart, but both under Olivier Krumholtz. Canor, Lacrabert, Zadi. They're getting the goalkeeper back in again. And that's an attacking foul called against Lacrabert, who just smiles at the referee and runs off. They've got to hurry up. Russia breaking. Glosser is back in goal again now. France still short handed for 20 seconds as Sen races off and back on comes Kochetova. It's a free throw for Russia and the crowd now, the decibel level in the arena is deafening. Edwige. Players just have to keep their heads here and say absolutely calm about it. Trefilov will, it's all part of the game for him. Gamesman par excellence into the wing. Glosser goes down and the ball goes over the top. Kuznetsova scores her second and uh, some of the crowd whistling, which is unfortunate. The players have nothing to do with that decision. Just shot before she landed, and Glosser went much too early. Two goals in it only. Samokina's happy. Or oh, no, Sudakova, rather. There is uh, one of two ways this goes, of course, for France. Either they stay focused and uh, really drive on relentlessly to get the win for Pino, or they can get reckless a little bit with their play. And that could play into the hands of the Russians. La Crabert, yes, exactly the same run as earlier. She loves those cross-court efforts. Three-goal lead restored. La Crabert, who remembers the Olympic final so well because uh, when the teams were level, defender charged out and absolutely shoulder barged her and uh, injured her shoulder and she couldn't continue. And, uh, she stood dejected on the podium, even though they had silver. Great achievement with the arm in a sling. Cross court now, Vyakireva, a little wider than she wants to be. Dmitrieva, good defense. Kocetova held by uh, Glusser. And Pino, the tears have stopped, but uh, I'm sure she can't quite believe it still. Tried to surprise the keeper with a quick shot, Kocetova. Well, that was the one that did go in at the other end, underneath the keeper, La Crabère. And Pino has become the cheerleader in chief here in Paris. And chance of Ali Le Bleu ringing around this arena, 15,000 spectators. Zadi. Nzeminko. La Crabère, there isn't any space there this time. Back across court it goes, Zadi's now gone into the right back position, they need to get organised again. La Crabère, wrong way, she wanted Zadi to come back in. Passive play is going to come soon, I suspect, it's been a little while, little handoff. That took a deflection off a defender, the sting out of the shot and the break is on, Dmitrieva looks for options, found Sen, she's got a huge shot! And she gets her third of the game, and it all started with Sedo Akina getting the ball out quick. 96 kilometers an hour. Nearly got a hand on it, Glosser. Ten minutes played then. Just two goals in it. La Crabère. Looking for the line, little shove in the back of uh, Edwige. She goes down, it's a free throw. An anxious uh, faces, and I'm sure a few uh, hearts palpitating here in the arena, looking for the line. Bit of a pull back on Edwige, free throw for France. And uh, that is Maya Petrova who plays for Rostov Don. 18 goals for them in the Russian league this season, but being used primarily in defense in Zeminko. Looking for the line, and again, the line player is being held back. 
passive play. They can't have too many passes left. The player's being told to stand three metres back. Team timeout, France. Just need to settle things down, but Kumholz has worked up himself. We've just got to keep it nice and steady here, the French. Here was the pass. Well, what was wrong with that? And Sen is asking the same question. No, 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 laissez-moi parler. Tu donnes à Orlane et tu vas te décaler. Tu donnes et tu te décales là. Non, pas à double écran. Là. Tu donnes la balle ici, là. Et là, tu vas jouer là. Et toi, tu viens jouer là et tu tires. Oui. You do this and you shoot. She goes, can I shoot? Yes, he says. Well, if you want attention, you've come to the right place. The final of Euro 2018. As the red card for one of the most popular players in the French team, Alison Pinault, has uh, ratcheted up the atmosphere in the arena here. But there's nothing in it between these two teams. A dream final. Started with this match, will end with this match. Too many passes. Turnover. The wingers are away, Kuznetsova is there, but they took too long to get themselves organised. And so they settle things down a little bit here. So Vyakireva, who's had a spectacularly good tournament, I have to say, the number 13. I have loved watching her play. 36 goals, fourth top scorer in the competition, and 38 assists, the second highest in the competition. Oh, brilliant play, little flick of the wrist. And they're back within one. And uh, again, the referee's not quite sure what to give there. The French know, Pino says, at least give her a two-minute suspension, and that's what she's got. And Zeminko grabbed around the head and face-planted. But that was a class goal. Close to the face, but uh, enough away that it's fine. So Dimitrieva's fourth goal has got them back within range. France only have a free throw here. But Dimitrieva has been given the two-minute suspension. Dmitrieva, who scored eight against France in the opening match in this competition just over two weeks ago, as she led her team to victory. Oh, poor pass. Zadi misconnects completely with Lacrabert, and that's just what Russia wanted. Kumholtz can't get himself heard in the arena here. It is deafening. Turnovers, eight for Russia, six for France. Actually, at the pace some of the game has been played. Not bad going for either. Kuznetsova comes all the way around. Managarova. Passive play now being called against the Managarova. Another one who's had a terrific tournament here, the 30-year-old. Called up fairly late to the Russian national team, but scored 62 goals in 20 matches before this Euro. Managarova tries another one of those low-range shots. It doesn't come off. Zadi is paying attention, because Iglon just wants to get off. For Glosser, that'll be save number four. That'll be one of the easier ones. Zadi. Oh, it's given. Was that an attacking foul, though? Petrova may well have been inside, and... Uh, well, she was inside, in fact, at the second point of impact. Sedo Kina says that it should have been. And Pino... The eyes dried a little. 
France still only lead by two. That's nothing. That lead could disappear in a blink of an eye. Kuznetsova. Kuznetsova, who uh, scored six from six in the uh, Olympic Games in Rio. When they met in the main round, they met twice, and then again in the final. And it's a two-minute suspension now for France. And Zadi shakes her head and goes... Well, Vyakireva, I think, being held, but not necessarily pushed. But uh, if you catch them in the air, you are playing with fire. So this could uh, be a chance for Russia now, but the uh, team timeout is called by Russia. Well, tension galore here. Don't go anywhere, will you? Great efforts there, Glosser, who's made well, three saves. I think she's been robbed of one. Well, incredible scenes here. Tight final is what we wanted, and we knew two very tough defences. So Zadi starts the suspension. Couldn't release the ball. That was good defending because right behind, Makieva was completely free. The hand off, the ball is stolen away, goes wet. Oh, unlucky for Sedo Ikina, but wet gets a first of the game. A typical steal from the winger from Metz. Straight comeback here, saved. Kuznetsova, I can't believe it, she thought she was interfered with in the shot. There was the steal under the nose of Yakireva. Wet raced off the 26 year old. And a touch by the Russian keeper, but it wasn't quite enough. Fifteen minutes played. France lead by three again. No goalkeeper. Levels things up in attack. Nyombla has returned in. Oh, good save! Sidoy Kina. Ball coming out quickly. Glosser is back in goal, that was lucky. Yakireva drops it. French defence being pulled from side to side, quickly played, penalty, Yakireva. And she's starting to find a little bit of space now. And when she finds form, so do Russia. Lino sitting on the bench, looking on anxiously. It was a nice spell of play because it was so quick left and right. Eventually, the French defence got pulled apart. She'll take it herself. Scored two already. Scored three now. Fifth goal for her. Three of them penalties. 92 kilometres an hour, that shot. So France, who will be back to full strength shortly. Glossaire has come out. And she can go back in now. So Nyombla, who's only played 15 minutes in the championship, the number 29 up until now. And Canor, just 21 years of age. Ball is still loose. Oh, lucky break for France and Manon Huet. As Nicolas Karabatic, the legend of the French men's handball team, looks on and cheers. Oh, yes. And Karabatic Jr. may be uh, another great player for France because uh, 
He also has a brother who plays for France, Nicolas Karabatic. So three goal lead restored, but it uh, could go so quickly. Save, but penalty is given again. Court defending inside. Another chance for Vyakireva and the penalty won by Sen. She is playing a terrific game here. And no problem for Vyakireva, so reliable like a metronome she is. Six from nine scored in the game now. Exactly the same as before, Glossier goes down a little too early. So 12 minutes remaining, France with a very slender two-goal lead. Could have been four if they'd put their two penalties away. La Crabère. Nyombla, Canor. That's a long pass when Nyombla shifts to the right. Got to watch out, they don't get that intercepted. Canor. They know she's coming now. Makieva going out quickly to her. Coatanea, who's gone in on the right wing, is trying to get away, but uh, being held clearly. And Canor doesn't have to shoot over the top all the time. She can break through as well, can she? Second goal for her. One was a bullet, that was a breakthrough. Makieva goes back in on the line. Playing her fifth European Championship. And for Russia, on comes Samokina, only played seven minutes so far on the far wing, number 18. She scored seven from eight in uh, their win against France in their first match. Free throw for Russia as France prepared to bring on Astrid Ngouan, line player who plays for Brest. Sen calling the move here as Lacrabert pushes right up onto Dimitrieva. There is space at the back though for Petrova, the line player. Passive play now being called. Vyakireva. Oh, attacking foul. Bounces into La Crabère and she's cheering that on as if she just won the game. Lino, the whole bench every time are on their feet. Here though was Canor's breakthrough. Great goal. Ten minutes remaining, France with a three-goal lead. This match can just turn so quickly. A couple of mistakes here or there could make all the difference. Oh, off the post, unlucky for France, and Flip comes away empty-handed. A good break now for Russia. Dmitrieva sent into the wing. And again, quick reaction. Glossier goes down early, and first goal of the game for Samokina. So unlucky for Flip. What could have been a four goal lead for France instead is cut back to two. Samokina, who is the player of the match in the opener. So, Flip being used as a right back, comfortable doing that. She's a back or a wing. Penalty, caught them defending inside the area. Applause from the crowd. From Pino, who's probably gone from being upset. There was just enough gap that the referees gave it. Tight, because uh, Trefilov doesn't agree. He thought that was an attacking foul. You can't please everyone. La Crabère missed one already. Again, Sedoikina comes a long way forward. Well, you need nerves of steel when you're doing it, but La Crabère puts it away. Fourth goal for her after missing the earlier penalty. Yakileva again tries to cut back inside. It's 
going to be a free throw. They managed to stay outside the area. An anxious look by Koatania. The bench, though, jumping on their feet. Managarova thinks it should be more. And it is a seven meter. Defending. Oh, inside the area. And Koatania got a leg caught underneath. Friendly exchange there between <laughs> Edwige and Vyakireva. Eight minutes to go, and back on comes Lino. She's saved four in the competition. Can she stop Yakireva? No, she can't, in exactly the same place as well. Seven goals now for the Russian pocket rocket. What an amazing work ethic she has put in. Yakireva. Luckily, though, for the Russians, because they've had a couple of matches where they could really ease off, where they were guaranteed top spots, they've turned the bench, and Yakireva has been rested extensively during the competition. France haven't quite had that luxury. Nguyen not been on a long time. That's an attacking foul, is it? Defending inside the area. Well, I thought the first drive-in could have been straight on. Clock has been stopped. Cuts in well, the space is there. Rather theatrical fall by Dmitrieva. But in fact, it was a good call. So on comes Kira Trusova, the goalkeeper from Astra Kanochka. She's only saved one from 13, but that doesn't mean anything in a final. La Crabère. Uh, lifted the leg the first time, and when she tempted it the second time, slots it in underneath. Nicely done. So La Crabère with a second penalty. La Crabère, who played for a while in Russia for Zvenigorod, the Zvezda club. So Dmitrieva, seven minutes to go. France know they shouldn't count their chickens yet, and uh, both hanging on to each other. Edwige. Gets away with that one, Vyakireva, again, looking for the pass, big angle on the wing, oh, save! Tried to lob her, and Samokina comes away empty-handed, and Lino, who stayed on after the penalty, gets a huge cheer from Glosser on the bench. Big let off for France. Lino's seventh save. French keepers are certainly pulling their weight here, especially in the second half. Six minutes for France to hang on here. Zadi. Flip. Zeminko. Penalty. Makieva was all over her. And Gouan face planted into the ground. Clock has been stopped. And Zeminko, the provider, but clearly defending inside and then took the arm as well. Look at the celebration, Simon Gouan. And at the other end, well, both holding on to each other. Mind games. La Crabère. Sedo Ikina stays in now. Got a good track record so far. Oh, wide! And La Crabère, wasteful. Can't believe it. Three penalties missed now. And that might just get Russia's tails up here. Could have been uh, three goals better off inside. Good play. Cut the pass to the left-hand side and forced it back towards the middle. Now there's space underneath the keeper. Trefilov poker-faced, but that all helps. Back to within two. There was the cross pass and a good block on the line. Dmitrieva with a bit of space. Fifth goal for her. Five minutes to go, 21-23, Russia trail. France have managed to get a three-goal lead at times, but have never managed to get any more than that. Zeminko, La Crabère, a bit of space here. Zadi goes wide. And France is shooting suddenly, going back downhill again. And they have these purple patches, the French, when it all goes a little bit wrong. 
now would not be a time to do it. Oh, clips the post, no touch by the keeper, throw in for France, and Krumholz seems to be saying, ease it up, there's no one up front anyway, and Yakireva is fallible after all. Carnival atmosphere here. She just saw enough daylight, she was committed, she had to take the shot. That there was the one at the other end and never got her wrist around it. Four minutes to go. France have to be really smart about this if they want to take their first European title. They're hosting the competition for the first time ever, and it could be their first ever European title that's come off a defender. France will keep possession. Anxious looks on the bench, none more so than uh, Samokina, who's briefly been on and come back off again. Manon Fouet, they're in no hurry. Three and a half minutes. Canor brings it out again. They're going to run it almost as far as the referees will uh, give them time for. Lacrabert goes in. Oh, yes! Windmill Fane past the first and scores. But she's still down. And coming up to three minutes played. Well, with the throw-off being taken, I am very surprised. She's managed to drag herself up. She went down heavily and smacked her face on the ground, just checking her teeth. Windmills past her sent. And before she gets to step in, in fact, it was a knee in the head. Three minutes to go in a three-goal lead. Vyakireva, are the hosts going to do it here? Is it going to be a fairy tale? Uh, Kuznetsova remonstrates with the referee and says, you should be taking action. The referee is not interested. But she may have even got a cut on her hand, which means they're going to have to change her, quickly tape it up and send her back on, or is it uh, spray? Vyakireva into the wing, there's no space there. She tries to cut back again. Yakireva briefly put the block on. Two and a half minutes for France to hang on. Russia, though, they've got the experience there. Yakireva. They're throwing everyone in front of her, and they've got to be careful in the closing stages. Pino is on her feet. Team timeout. Trefilov. Iglu urges the crowd on. He is incandescent, the Russian coach. It is impossible to tell you what emotions must be going through the heads of the French players. Twice world champions, they have never won the European Championship France. This would be a dream. The first time they host the European Championship, male or female, but they are not there yet. Yakireva. Shot taken, it's going to be a free throw. Oh, and a passive play being warned as well. Pressure is on as we go into the last two minutes. And that's Kuznetsova, who came off to get some ice. Oh, brilliant play, but saved by Lino. And the whole bench jump up, and Klusse, I can't believe it either. They beat the French defence, got the ball in behind. But Lino, save number seven. Look at this, so much space. Tipped it across the bar. And Glosser, the tears will flow, I can tell you, with Glosser. And he gets very emotional with the anthem. Russia have used up all their team timeouts. France have one left. Surely a three goal lead with one minute and ten seconds will be enough. And Zeminko, Lacrabert, happy to go back again. There is no rush. Team timeout France with just over one minute left. 
the title surely is there. And once again, Pino is in tears, but tears of joy. And the president of the French Federation, Joël Delplanc, that such a nice touch has come all the way down to give her a big hug and comfort her. Look at the smiles. It's going to take something rather special for Russia to turn this around. They trail by three. There is only just one minute and one second to go. But France have possession. Yakireva looks on and it uh, looks as if France will gain revenge for that Olympic defeat and for the defeat on the opening day of this championship. Passive play has now been called. Oh, off the post. They still have it, though. And the passive play call goes away as they took a shot at goal and they can run the clock down even more now. Enze Minko and Krumholtz. Brimming smile. They've done it. France have done it. Sylvie Lagardère, the organising committee president, who's put on a great championship, will also see her team walk away with gold. The ball is stolen. Russia on the break. 25 seconds to go. They will not have time, though, I'm afraid, to do very much here other than make the score look a bit more respectable. Not that it isn't now. Ten seconds to go. Dmitrieva, wing to wing. Oh, saved again. Linou will have the last word. Save number eight. And France are European champions. They add the title to the world crown. Linou with eight saves, Lacrabert, six goals, and floods of tears of joy for France. The title that has always eluded them, three semi-finals, they lost all three and took bronze, but now they've gone all the way on home ground. Zadi is in heaven. Lino can't believe it. And Pino has come back, and a huge hug for Glosser. And the team will have a very special welcome for her. Pino, who was controversially sent off for that shot close to the goalkeeper's face. For Russia, they just couldn't get their stride in the second half. It was the French defence, it spoilt the rhythm. Anna Sen, it won't be her trophy, I'm afraid, this year. France have won. Well, the great moment as well. Spare a thought for Coatania and Fopa playing in their first major competition for France on home soil in front of 15,000 spectators and they win the gold medal. Well, the French sports minister must be delighted, Roxana Racineanu. But Krumholtz has taken them to their third title two worlds and now european they are double champions zadi comes over to thank the entire technical crew well the player of the match goes to vyakireva seven goals from 11 attempts three assists five of the goals penalties but i'm afraid you will struggle to get a smile on the face of the russian back player this title slipped away from the Russians, and France have finally gained revenge. Yakireva wants to hand the trophies over for safekeeping. Well, take nothing away from the Russians, it is a great achievement to win. Silver. And now the All-Star Team awards being made to those players who are here in the final. And first up, Amandine Lino, who is the All-Star goalkeeper at the Women's EHF Euro 2018. And that's just the icing on the cake, frankly, for her and her teammates. 
Lino, who was with the team that took gold at the World Championships last year. For Glusser, this is, of course, a very special moment because she wasn't with the World Championship team last year. La Crabert in floods of tears with Glusser. Probably not the best person to go to because they're both prone to crying a lot. Yakireva again. The MVP of Euro 2018. Well, she can find a smile, and she should. She has played an absolutely brilliant tournament, Yakireva. She was the key to Russia, but today France just managed to neutralize her enough. But it is still a silver medal, and they will be on the podium, Russia. France, who lost just the one match to Russia on the opening day, and Vyakireva, it's almost becoming too much for her. As Lacrabert says again and again to Pino, on est champion! You are on home soil. You couldn't have written this better if you tried. It's a Cinderella story. Big hug for Dembele, of course, who until last year played in Russia for Rostov Don was up against eight of her former club teammates. And Kormoltz, master extraordinaire, brings a tenth medal to the French team and a third title. And no one will want to leave this arena. French players going over to uh, thank the crowd. Well, incredible in the end, but they managed to restrict the Russians to 21 goals, and that was key. It was probably going slightly too fast for them in the first half. But in the end, they did what they had to do, stifled the game. Zadi. She's got her own celebrations planned here. Well, for Pino, the disappointment of the early call against her, the red card, gone now. Absolute roar for this 15,000 crowd in the Accor Hotels Arena in Paris. The dream has come through. First time they've hosted the tournament and the home team has gone straight through and won its first ever European title. Russia, who uh, previously had been restricted to 24 goals by Montenegro, but they won that match, the Russians. Here, France, they had to defend hard, they knew they would. <laughs> the French team are going to want to camp here for a few nights, I think. I hope they haven't got anything planned on Monday. Reserve players have joined them on court. Uh, La Crabert needed a big game today and she got it. Went there, who scored some crucial goals at just the right moment to push home the advantage for the French. A moment to save her. Slight disappointment for Alison Pino. But it's one of those things, if anything, it motivated the team to drive on. And now the bench is mobbed. It takes more than just the 16 players to win this title. It takes coaches and physios and managers, doctors, analysts,
And in the middle, Joël Delplanc, the president of the French Handball Federation. Well, their men's team has been preeminent for so long. At one point holding all three titles, in fact, twice holding all three titles. And now all of a sudden the women have two titles under their belt. And the good news for them is they're now automatically qualified for the Olympic Games in Tokyo. Well, the answer is uh, Zadi feeling blessed. Can't quite fathom it, but it really drove us on, she said. As for uh, Pino, well, she said, I've gone through all the emotions. 49% of the attack succeeded for Russia, 57% for France. They're shooting a little lower than average on 59% the French, but it was enough. The fast breaks, they cancelled each other out in the end. France missed three penalties. We're lucky to uh, not lose by any margin there because they would have felt ever so bad. And then 11 turnovers Russia to France's seven. Vyakireva, uh, top scorer in this match with her seven goals, and that gave her player of the match. But Lachaber with six at crucial points, and Nzeminko in four. That was enough to lead France with a host of other players on twos and ones. So the uh, top uh, shooter, well, Sen got 96 kilometers an hour. In the end, France outdid them all with 99 kilometers an hour. Just shy of the 100. She won't care. The second half, France won by a couple of goals to add to the one. And you can see how there was a stream in the middle when they really started to pull away. And at the end, the Russians just ran out of steam. And so France winning 24-21 are the new European champions. So Michael Widerer, the president of the European Handball Federation, lifting the European Championship plate. So it was bronze for the Netherlands, silver for Russia, but France are the new European champions. Michael Widerer advances, and the captain of the French team, Siraba Dembele Pavlovich, prepares to take the plate. And they've done it. Gingerly, she takes it. The new European champions, it's France. Fantastic scenes in Paris. The first time they have hosted it, and France take gold at Euro 2018. The title they so desperately wanted, and the celebrations will go on long into the night. 24 21 winners over Russia. They avenge the defeat on the opening day and can now start the celebrations in earnest. Well, as we leave you with these wonderful scenes in Paris, it only remains for me to say thank you so much for following Euro 2018 with us for these past two weeks. We hope you've enjoyed it. We certainly have. And until next time, from me, Paul Bray, and all the production team here in Paris, good night.